All right, let's look at this uh, problem right here. Determine the force in each member. So another one of those. We've got to find the force in every member. Um, if P1, if this is 10, and if P2 is 15 kilonewtons, determine the force in each member. All right, we've just been talking about zero force members. Do you see some zero force members here? I think I do here, right? Member CD and DE, force in CD is zero. <clears throat> Force in DE is zero. Uh, so that, hey, that really simplifies my answer. All right. Um, once I erase that, then that one, uh, it's, it's only two members attached to each other, but I, I do have this 15 coming off. Is that, is that kind of in, something interesting about that? I'm going to pause right there, and I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, so I, I'm just going to say, okay, CD... And DE are zero force members. I don't know if there are really any others. Do you see any others? We'll just say there are no others right now uh, that we can that we notice right here. Uh, this is equal to 15. This is equal to 10. All right. So uh, let me look at the whole. What's what's our process for joints? Right. Look at the whole free body diagram. Uh, sum the forces in the um, x for the whole free body diagram, some force in y, some the moments. To solve for my unknowns, I have a pin right here at a, a, y, and a, x. I've got a pin right here at g I want to talk about. All right. I've got a pin right here at g. My first instinct is to draw a g, y, and a g, x. Uh, but... This is kind of a special pin. It's a pin that's attached to a member and only one member. A pin that is connected to a member and only one member. Uh, I mean, think about what, what if I kind of looked at joint G? What if I looked at a free body diagram of joint G? Do you see that GY is going to be equal to zero? Do you see that GY is going to be equal to zero? Um, because if I looked at joint G, I have got might have a GX. I've got force in GB. GY is going to be zero. Uh, if you have a pin, or, or if you have a member that is connected to one pin, then the reaction at the pin is going to be along the member. Uh, this is, member BG is really just a link. That is really just a link. Remember, go back to those, and those links uh, are, you know, along the member. So, Anytime I see a um, pin that is only attached to one member, I don't draw a GX and a GY. I just draw one force along the member. In this case, I'm just going to draw a GX to solve for. I'm just going to draw a GX to solve for. All right. Okay. So let's look at the whole free body diagram. Let us sum the forces in x, gx plus ax. And that's it, is equal to zero. Let me sum the forces in y, ay minus 10 minus 15. Ay would be 25 kilonewtons. I'm about to box it in. Don't really box in things unless we're unless the question explicitly asked for it. So ay is 25. <laughs> Let me, and then let me sum my moments. I think probably some of the moments about A makes sense. Uh, GX is acting four away, creating a negative moment. That 10 is acting two away, creating a negative moment. Goodness, that um, 15 is acting six away, creating a negative moment. Please write equal zero. Please write equal zero to make sure that we do this equation correctly. So I'm gonna you know add those to the other side. I would get GX negative 27.5 kilonewtons. So it was not that way, it was that way. But I'm going backwards to an equation I've already written. That would make AX positive 27.5 kilonewtons. So here we go. Here are my three reactions. AY is 25. AX 27.5, and I drew those correctly. GX is to the left here, 27.5. All 
All right, so now I think I'm ready to look at a joint. Um, I could start at joint A. I could start at joint G. Um, I might could, you know, I could have actually started at joint E. I don't know if I could do the whole problem without looking at the whole free body diagram. I might could have. Um, but anyway, so now you can choose a joint to look at. Let, let's, let's talk about joint G. We don't really have to look at joint G exactly, but I think we should. Let's look at joint G and draw it. Let's use our process as if we were to um, draw a free body diagram. I've got 27.5 that way. All right, I've got 27.5 that way. So do you see that that means I need the force in GB is 27.5 uh, in tension. 27.5 kilonewtons in tension. So the force in GB, 27.5 kilonewtons in tension. All right. And, and sometimes I like to I like to write a check check mark right there. All right. Uh, I've kind of thought I should go to B, but that would have three unknowns. Let me go to A. Let me go to A. All right. Then I'll have two unknowns I can solve for from A. So let me go to A. Joint A. I already knew this was 25. I knew this was 27.5. I don't know the force in AF. I don't know the force in AB. AB is at, let's look at these dimensions, a 2 by 5 over 2, uh, sorry, up 4. 2 squared plus 4 squared is a, a, a square root of 20. All right, so summing the forces in the x direction. 27.5, right, what, what is x? x is to the right. 27.5, right there, um, plus FAF, and plus the FAB, the 2 over square root of 20 component equals 0. Can't solve. Let me go to the y direction. Positive 25 and positive FAB, the 4 over square root of 20 component equals 0. So I would get FAB negative 27.95 kilonewtons. So FAB... 27.95 kilonewtons compression, uh, but I'm going to plug that negative back into an equation I've already written. FAF would be negative 15 kilonewtons. So FAF is 15 kilonewtons compression. Remember, do not tell me, don't tell me negative and compression. Don't box that one in. Don't say negative and compression. Change it to positive and tell me compression. Okay, so I found FAF and FAB. Um, so I've got FAF and FAB. Uh, let me go to uh, sum the forces um, at, you know, where, where can I go? I could go to joint B. I could go, I can't go to joint C. I don't know that. I, I can't go to joint F. All right. So let me go to joint B and solve for these. Joint B right here. Summing the forces. I don't have the rest of this. Sorry. Let me try this. All right. I'm going to try this without a solution. So y'all help me out here. Uh, I'm going to joint B. What do I have at joint B? I already solved for FBG is 27.5 in tension. 27.5 in tension. I don't know force in BC, um, but I do know the force right here in AB. The force in AB, 27.5 kilonewtons compression. It's going to be right here. Sorry, 27.95 in compression, right? And it is at a 2, 4 square root of 20. Uh, and I don't know the force in BF. All right, so there's my free body diagram. All right, there's my free body diagram. And so I can sum the forces in the x direction, FBC, minus 27.5, plus 27.95, the 2 over square root of 20 component, equals 0. Right, right equals zero here. Uh, let's see, 27.95 times two 
divided by the square root of 20. Uh, that is 12.5 uh, minus 27.5. That's negative 15. Uh, bring to the other side. So this FBC would be positive 15 uh, kilonewtons. It came out positive, so it is in... Um, it is in tension, right? It came out positive, so it is in tension. Box that in. And now summing the forces in the y direction. I've got uh, 27.95, uh, the 4 over square root of 20 component, and then minus FBF equals 0. I would get FBF, let me see if I can do this, 27.95 times 4 divided by square root 20. 25. FBF is 25 kilonewtons. It came out positive, so it was in tension. All right. So now I've got uh, this one and this one. Um, I could go here, uh, but let, let me show you something. And uh, yeah, I mean, I could definitely go here. Maybe I should. Yeah, let me go there. Let me go there. Um, or I could go here. I could actually go to E, any of those. Let me go to F, because I think that's what I would logically kind of do next. Let's go to uh, free body diagram for F. Free body diagram for F. All right, free body diagram for F. I have 10 pointed down. Um, I saw for FAF earlier, uh, it was 15 compression. So I've got 15 compression. Um, I have solved... For FBF, it's 25 in tension. Uh, and so here, I don't know force in EF, and I don't know force in CF. Force in CF is 4 by 4. So this would be at a 45 degree angle. And now let me sum the forces in X and Y. Summing the forces in X would be F, FEF, mm -mm, plus 15, plus FCF uh, cosine 45 equals 0. That has two unknowns. Let me go to summing the force in Y. Summing the force in Y, I've got 25 minus 10 plus FCF sine 45 equals 0. Let me solve uh, for that one. Hopefully this will all work out. 25 minus 10 uh, would be 15. Uh, bring it to the other side, it's negative 15 divided by sine, negative uh, 15 divided by sine 45 would be, uh, FCF would be negative 21.2 kilonewtons. So FCF, 21.2 kilonewtons, compression. And then plug back in this negative 21 right here. Let me double check this. Negative 21 times... Cosine 45 plus 15, yeah. FEF, I got to be zero. FEF, I got to be zero. If it's zero, you don't have to specify compression or tension. Uh, it's neither. It, it is zero. All right. Did y'all recognize that uh, beforehand that the force in FEF, the force in EF was going to be zero? Uh, even though this does have a uh, force acting on here, it's almost a joint that has, it's a three force joint. And this, these two are collinear. This third one is going to be a zero force member. But did you see that even though I didn't recognize it, the math showed me the math came out to be zero. All right, I've got that one. Um, I'm only lacking one. I, I can look at joint E, right? And if I have 15, this one's going to have to be 15. So the force in CE is 15 kilonewtons tension right there. Then I've got, I've answered the question. That was a tough one. That was a long one. Answer the question, what's the force in every member? Whew. Let's, let's look back at what we did. All right, a couple things. I noticed some zero force members to try to simplify the problem a little bit before I even got started. So maybe try to do that um, before you get started with some of these problems. 
This one I noticed, yes, it was a pin, but it's a pin only connected to one, so it doesn't have a GX and a GY. It only has one reaction along the direction of that pin, along the pin, along the direction of that member. And then I looked at the whole free body diagram, solved for what I could, AX, AY, and GX, and then I opened it up and I looked at pin at, at joint G. I looked at joint A. And I looked at joint B. I looked at joint C. And I hop from joint to joint, carrying what I've been solving for from one joint to the next. Remember, tension is always pulling at a joint. It pulls at joint A and it pulls at joint B, you know, if, if AB is in tension. It, it pulls kind of on both sides of the joint. Uh, compression is always pushing. Um, and then box in those answers, magnitude, and then parentheses T for tension, parentheses C for compression.